I noticed different types of plants growing at different depths in the water. I noticed the squirrel's tail is down when the squirrel is standing up. I noticed the squirrel's tail is straight behind its body when the squirrel is jumping. I noticed the squirrel's eye is all black and doesn't have the white part that human eyes do. I noticed that Mount Tam seems to have one tall peak and a short peak. I noticed the water and land meet in several different ways. I noticed the green algae is only around some of the rocks. I noticed there are more branches on one side of the tree than the other. Good morning, my environmental detective friends. Looking forward to doing some new investigations and detective work with you. Let's go find clues right here in our own neighborhood environment. Thanks, Duke. Good to see you. Welcome, my environmental detective friends. I'm really excited to see you here today. Today, it's sunshine. I'm here welcoming you at Olive Elementary School in Novato. And let's go back. Where are we? Where are we at this time? So let's begin first by getting out your drawing finger and let's make the shape of our state of California. So we'll start up here. Remember all these big cities that we looked at? And let's draw the shape of California, thinking of all of our family members and where they live in California. When I count to three, will you tell me does, where, what city your family lives near? One, two, three. Oh, I heard so many of you say that you have family near San Francisco. I also have family near Fresno. And down there in Los Angeles, we call this Southern California. I'm sure many of us have family down there too. So now let's go, we're here in Marin County. That's our county. Let's draw that shape again. Take out your drawing finger and we're gonna draw the shape of our Marin County in the air. Really thinking about where am I in this county? We've been spending a lot of time in San Rafael. Remember we were at Pickleweed next to the bay? Well today we're in the town of Novato and you can find Novato just north of San Rafael and one of the things that's nice here about Novato is we have a mountain, big hill, that we call Mount Burdell that you can see when you're driving that 101, you can see Mount Burdell up there. It's almost, when you're there, you can also then see Mount Tamalpais. And both of these are features that you can see when you're in your community anywhere along Marin County. So while you're driving, while you're exploring, take time to look at that. Well, all right, my environmental detective friends, it's time to stand up, move our bodies, and ex celebrate exploring Marin County. Get your hands ready. This is a repeat after me song. So it means you will repeat what I sing. Are we ready? Let's go. I said from east to west, exploring Marin County is the best. I said from east to west, exploring Marin County is the best. Na 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 na, na 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 Na, 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 na. All right, my environmental detective friends. So let's take some time to revisit those little squirrels that we were visiting in the big cage. So you're going to need your detective tool, your notebook or the paper that you're using to record your ideas. Some of you could be doing it digitally, but wherever it is that you're putting all your thoughts and ideas. Because now we need to think about when we watch these squirrels, how do we know when they'll be ready to go out into their natural world? 
So last time we met together, we came up with this list and we noticed all the things that were natural inside the cage. We also noticed the things that were human made or not natural inside the cage. And we had something that came up as an uncertain. So right now we wanna look at this video and we wanna think, huh, is there anything to add to my list in my notebook? Or better yet, what are some questions that come to mind about what we need to do for these squirrels to be released in the wild? What do we need to ask so that we know they will be successful? Let's go back to our squirrel friends. Those squirrels look like the ones that live on the ranch. Hey Alpine, do you think that they could be released here on the ranch? I think our squirrel buddies may be enjoying darting around the trees with them, climbing on the branches and nibbling on the acorns. I just hope they don't chatter up while I try to nap. You know, Duke, uh, those squirrels are not quite healthy enough to be released out into nature yet. But Wildcare is doing a great job creating uh, the best natural environment that they can inside those cages. Why don't we go back and see how they're doing? Wow, Duke and Alpine bring up some great questions. It makes me want to go back into my notebook and I want to add those questions into my sketches and ideas about the squirrels because we really do need to know. What do we need to know about the squirrels to know that they'll be ready for their natural environment? Let's watch these two in this cage video. Did you see those squirrels? I am busy right now recording my questions like, are they getting along? Are they trying to wrestle? It reminds me of being with my brothers. Do you get along with your friends and siblings all the time? I wonder if that's what they were doing. Were they getting along? Were they not getting along? Were they both trying to get that corn? So the corn is, is like the food, right? That's the food that they're eating. So it makes me wonder if that's the food they're getting, is this what squirrels do in their natural environment when they're looking for food? Do you have questions like that? Like, do squirrels need to fight for their food? Or do they come up with a plan together? Maybe this is something they need to know how to do. What are your questions? Do you have wonderings about what we need to know about these squirrels before they're released? I'd love for you to share them with me. So make sure you send them to us. What questions do we need to ask to know when the two squirrels can be released to their natural environment? I want to know how to ask better questions. So let's think about those squirrels in the cage and, were you, and let's think about 
those squirrels now being released on the outside. What are these squirrels gonna need to be able to do? Those are the questions I'm asking in my notebook. And as I look outside in my sit spots of what are squirrels able to do? So let's make a prediction. What do we think squirrels need to do before they can be released out in the wild? Do, what, do they need to have strong muscles? Do they need to know how to get their food? What do I need to look at to know? So let's watch a squirrel that has, that's out in its natural environment. And while you're watching this squirrel, I want you to notice where is it, what is around it, and what is this squirrel able to do? While thinking about those squirrels in the cage, join me, let's watch our squirrel. So record your ideas that what you just saw with the squirrel. Did your thinking change after you saw the squirrel up on the telephone wire? And what did you see that the squirrel was able to do that was different from what we saw the squirrels were doing in the cage? Get those ideas down there. Were they moving more quickly? Were they running rapidly? What kinds of things were they doing? So our brains have been working, we've been busy recording and drawing. So let's use our body to use some of the things I've been using in my sketches. For example, let's use our bodies to make a straight line. Nice and straight. And in this straight line, why don't you walk in a straight line? And then we're gonna walk backwards in a straight line. Another way to make a straight line. And now let's try to make this with a curve. We can curve up. What if we curve to the side? We could curve to the other side. I'm gonna use my whole body to make a curve. Is that a curve? What if we try walking in a curve? I'm gonna go over here to the right. And then I'm going to walk backwards. And let's think of another kind of tool with sketching, a zigzag. I can make my arms like a zigzag. Let me see your zigzag. How about your body in a zigzag? The other way. Shall we walk in a zigzag? Zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. How about backwards? Zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Oh. Gosh, I can do that all day long. Keep moving. Hi friends, I'm back. It's Miss French with our sentence patterning chart and our four parts of speech. Adjectives, nouns, verbs, and prepositional phrases. Describing words, person, place, thing, action word, tells you where and when. Today, we're gonna add another part of speech so we'll have five parts of speech for our complete sentence, which is a statement, it tells you a fact. Get your scissors out and cut with me. We're cutting a line between our verb and our prepositional phrases, which tell it our action and our location or when something happens. And we're gonna add a new part of speech. You might recognize this from your teacher's classroom. Our new part of speech I want you to look for this word as I write it. Our new part of speech is called adverb. And I'm gonna show you the sign language for adverb. It goes like this, adverb. An adverb, wait a minute, has the word verb in it because an adverb describes the verb. It tells you how the squirrels climb. How do the squirrels explore? Hmm, I know an adverb that a lot of people forget to use. Like when somebody asks you, how do you feel today? Everybody's like, I feel good. But that 
that's not really an adverb that you should use. When somebody asks you how you feel, you should say, I feel well. That's an adverb that a lot of people forget to use. And I'm gonna do like a thumbs up here. How are you today? I'm well. And you? How can squirrels climb? Squirrels climb well. How do squirrels explore? Squirrels explore well. How do they nibble? Well. How do they dart? Well. That means you do it really good. I also saw in the video, those squirrels were moving around so fast. But fast isn't an adverb. Fast is an adjective. Hmm, I know that a lot of adverbs end with the suffix L-Y. A word that's an adverb that describes how squirrels can climb when they're so, so fast is the word quickly. And we'll go like this. Quickly. Say it and do it. Quickly. How do squirrels dart? Quickly. How do they drink? Quickly. How do they jump? Quickly. There's my sketch quickly. I'm going to do the opposite of quickly. Like a turtle. So slowly. And notice this word also has the same suffix ly. Here's my turtle. How do squirrels sniff? so slowly. How can they explore? Slowly, when they're really sleepy. When they don't want to get hurt and they're being super careful, there's a word for that. It's an adverb. It describes how you do something cautiously. There's that suffix ly. And I'm looking at this word, I'm like, I don't know if I spelled it right or not. So I'm just going to put sp question mark here. And sometimes when you're driving and you have to be really careful, you see a big sign, it's like danger, or be really careful. Go like this, cautiously. Say it and do it, cautiously. So now we added our new adverbs. We'll practice just with the adverbs. How can squirrels climb? Well, how can squirrels explore quickly? How can squirrels nibble slowly? And how can squirrels drink cautiously? So we, can't, we added our adverbs. Now we've got five parts of speech. This part of speech is an adverb. It describes the verb. It tells you how an action is done. But we got a problem here, friends. The problem is this. All of these things, we already watched. It already happened. It happened in the past. But our verbs here are present. Simple present means happening now. So we've got to change these verbs to match the show that already happened in the past. This is how we're going to change the verbs. We're going to change the verbs like this. We're going to say to ourselves, self, say it with me, self, today squirrels climb. Yesterday squirrels climbed. Say it with me, climbed. And you'll notice many times in English when we change a word to the past tense, we add the suffix ed. Today squirrels explore. But yesterday, squirrels, say it with me, explored. There's that ED again. And here's my sketch. I'm always forgetting my sketch issue. Today, squirrels nibble. Yesterday, squirrels, say it with me, nibbled. And there's that suffix, ED again. Today, squirrels dart. Yesterday, squirrels darted. And there's my sketch. I keep forgetting them. Today, squirrels drink. Yesterday, squirrels drinked. Wait a minute, that's not right. Today, squirrels drink. Yesterday, squirrels drank. 
Some verbs in English are irregular, which means the whole word changes, like today I swim, yesterday I swam, today I write, yesterday I wrote. We're going to do one more before we stop. Today squirrels jump, yesterday squirrels, say it with me, jumped. And I hear a different sound at the end of this word, t, jumped. Because sometimes the suffix ed can say d, sometimes it can say id, and sometimes it can say t. That's a really tricky thing about this suffix. All right, friends, we're ready to sing our new sentence patterning chart with our past tense verb, already happened, and with our adverb. Now we've got five parts of speech. Let's see. I'm going to go curious, playful, squirrels, drank, hmm, quickly, under a branch. We're ready to sing, friends. Here we go. Get ready and do the gestures with me. Curious, playful squirrels. Curious, playful squirrels. Curious, playful squirrels. Drank quickly under a branch. Let's do it again. Curious, playful squirrels. Curious, playful squirrels. Curious, playful squirrels drank quickly under a branch. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Sesmo Olenek, and I'm the principal of Olive School. And today I get to share an opportunity with you that I have every single day. Today I'm doing it under these beautiful redwoods at Olive School. Normally, what I do is at my home under my beautiful redwoods. I get to sit under my beautiful redwoods and today these beautiful redwoods and just be. I just get to sit there quietly and notice the redwoods. In that, I notice the animals that live in the redwoods, the insects, the birds that nest, the squirrels that climb up and down the trunk. And in that, I get to just sit quietly and listen to the breeze, the rustling of the leaves. Hear it? Look at the leaves. Look at everything. And just breathe deeply. Because this is an important part of being a person in our environment and a person enjoying our environment and enjoying the beauty of our environment is to be able to just for a minute be quiet and observe. So when you get this opportunity on your own, I want you to start by just sitting, getting yourself in a nice position, take a deep breath, Look around, look at the texture of the trunks, look at the filtering of the light through the leaves, listen to the birds and the insects. Imagine that it's its own small city with roads and highways and super highways and homes and places that animals go to every night and they get their food. They go to the grocery store in a way that you don't go to the grocery store. And if you are able to enjoy this, you will be able to be a happy person and enjoy your world. Because remember, when you get to sit and explore your world, you get to have fun. And remember, when you're doing that, you have to also be really safe and wear your mask. 
you're going to be using the websites presented below to help you and guide you through this exploration. And know that next time you go out, you too can be part of your environment. I wonder, which plants grow at different depths in the water? How do the plants not wash away? I wonder, why does the squirrel's tail move in different directions? I wonder, how does the squirrel's tail help her move? I wonder, why do squirrels' eyes look different from human eyes? I wonder, how was Mount Tam created? Has it always looked the same? I wonder, why does the water in the bay go higher onto some parts of the land than other parts? I wonder, is that algae? Why is it growing in that one spot? I wonder, why do the branches on the tree grow more on one side than the other?